Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we're checking out the MSI Optics MAG274QRX, which is MSI's version of a 27 inch 1440p 240Hz IPS gaming monitor that's a bit lighter on your wallet than previous displays of these specs. A couple of months back we checked out the Gigabyte M27QX which basically had the same set of talking points. So a fair bit of this video will be trying to figure out whether the MSI or Gigabyte version is worth buying if you're interested in upgrading to 240Hz. The fundamental hardware used for the MAG274QRX is the same as the M27QX. Both use the exact same sharp IPS panel. However, as we've seen countless times in the past, just because two monitors have the same panel doesn't mean they perform the same. So I'm curious to see how MSI's tuning and optimization has turned out. Especially so, given there's roughly a $50 price difference between the two, with the MSI model being the more expensive option, costing about $520 US. If you've seen an MSI monitor before, you won't be surprised at the design MSI has used here because it's basically the same as what they've been offering in the optics line for some time. But still, this is fresh B-roll, we're indeed looking at the actual MAG274QRX fairly standard build that uses mostly plastic for its construction and a healthy dose of game elements on the rear, including a circuit-like pattern and a rather pointless RGB LED strip. I don't think you'll be blown away with this design, but it's fairly normal for a mid-price monitor and the overall build is good. What MSI does well is offer a range of ergonomic adjustability, including height, tilt, swivel and pivot support, so you can use the monitor in a portrait orientation if you want, without needing a VESA mount, although VESA mounting is still supported. The range of height adjustment is decent too, so the monitor doesn't sit too low on a standard desk. The selection of ports is okay, with one DisplayPort 1.4, two HDMI 2.0 and USB Type-C supporting DP Alt mode. No issues with the display ports, but the HDMI ports don't support enough bandwidth to deliver the full 240Hz refresh rate, so they're limited to 144Hz. This monitor should have HDMI 2.1, so that users connecting over HDMI aren't limited. However, it's good to see KVM switch functionality is included, which is becoming more and more common with gaming monitors. As is standard these days, the OSD is controlled through a directional toggle and is quite easy to navigate. Plus it includes a solid range of features. Cheat crosshairs, shadow boosters, FPS displays, all of that is part of the feature set. It also supports user upgradable firmware, which recently a major technology company tried to tell me wasn't a common feature for gaming monitors. I think it kind of is, and the ability to update the software is important. Response time performance is next up, and it's a relatively simple story. MSI offers three modes, the first of which is the normal mode. You can think of this like overdrive disabled behavior, as you'll see no overshoot at any refresh rate, and response time averages in the 9 millisecond range. This isn't especially fast, but the mode is useful for those times where you really don't want to see inverse ghost trails, which may appear in some environments. The fast mode is essentially the good mode. Here at 240Hz we're looking at a 6.85 millisecond greater grade average, which it isn't amazing for this refresh rate and sees low refresh rate compliance, however the overall cumulative deviation average is below 500, which is what we want to see from a modern IPS, and the level of overshoot is minimal. You'll also spot a few oddly fast transitions here, here, and here. This is just the performance characteristics of this panel, where the closest transitions are the first to break through the speed barrier when overdrive is increased. The fastest mode at 240Hz isn't terrible, as far as these modes tend to be. Cumulative deviation has only increased slightly compared to using the fast mode, and it's only the closest transitions that have been significantly affected in terms of overshoot error. The monitor is also much faster in terms of response times compared to the previous mode, and this is what allows MSI to claim a 1 millisecond response time on the box. The fastest transitions are in the ballpark of 1 millisecond. However, the level of inverse ghosting in practice is noticeable, and I don't expect many people will choose to use this mode compared to the previous mode, but I'd stop short of calling it totally unusable. There's good news for gamers planning on using the variable refresh rate capabilities of this monitor. When using the fast overdrive setting, performance is very solid across the entire refresh rate range. When we get down to 165Hz, the average response time has improved to 4.77ms, and overshoot is still minimal. 
At 120Hz is a similar story, and at 100Hz we start to see very faint inverse ghost trails, though I think you'll find it difficult to spot these while gaming. 85Hz has the most overshoot of any refresh rate we tested, but again it's hard to spot and cumulative deviation of 600 is still reasonable given the circumstances. Then at 60Hz MSI appears to use some sort of variable overdrive to pull back a bit and prevent inverse ghosting, which is a good move here despite the slower response time numbers. I should note here that the MAG274 QRX doesn't appear to be duplicating 60Hz frames and displaying them at 120Hz or higher refresh rates. This behavior is different and more indicative of basic variable overdrive. With what appears to be variable overdrive in its toolkit, this monitor does have a single overdrive mode experience. The fast mode offers the best performance across the entire refresh range and is what I'd use for adaptive sync gaming. If you're really concerned about inverse ghosting at refresh rates like 85Hz, you can turn down the settings to normal, but these artifacts are hard to notice and I don't think the trade-off in speed is worth it. This is one of the main differentiating features between the MSI model and Gigabyte's M27QX. The M27QX does not use variable overdrive and has weaker performance at lower refresh rates as a result, accumulating in the lack of a single overdrive mode experience. MSI smartly includes this feature which leads to better gaming performance. Compared to other monitors, the MAG274 QRX isn't the best display at its maximum 240Hz refresh rate, but it's not all bad news either. The slower refresh rate is able to produce virtually no overshoot, which is in stark contrast to other displays, and I'd say performance is better than the XB273 UGX for example. Gigabyte's M27QX can produce a 4.6ms response time average, but only with much higher overshoot, so it's a trade-off here. The MSI model fares very well for average performance across the refresh range. The results here are better than the Gigabyte M27QX thanks to the use of variable overdrive, with a faster average response and lower inverse ghosting rate. This display is also able to outperform many of its more expensive competitors, like the AW2721D and XB273UGX for varying reasons. The only 1440p 240Hz IPS display that it can't beat is the ASUS PT279QM which features advanced variable overdrive. The benefits to optimizing the response behavior are shown in cumulative deviation. The MAG274QRX has the second best result of any 1440p 240Hz IPS that we've tested, showing that balance of speed and overshoot that we're talking about. It's not hugely superior to the M27QX, just a 6% better result. But this figure combined with its single overdrive mode experience is enough for me to call its gaming performance better. At 120Hz this display delivers a typical great experience as far as today's LCDs go. Again, I think these results are superior to the M27QX, but similar to others like the PG279QM. Then at 60Hz this is where we saw the most benefit from variable overdrive. While we are testing fixed refresh performance rather than variable refresh performance at 60Hz, and for this display there is a small difference between VRR on and off at a given refresh rate, the results are better than many monitors where you have to turn down the overdrive settings to get acceptable results at this refresh rate. Input lag, largely a non-issue, offering a processing delay below 1 millisecond and a fast refresh rate which feels responsive to use. The only downside here is the slower than standard 240Hz response times, which push the total input latency, so the time it takes between the input reaching the display and the final completed transition, higher than some other 240Hz monitors. Power consumption is slightly higher than the M27QX, but still good as far as 27-inch IPS monitors go, and of course a non-issue for most prospective buyers. This monitor, it does support backlight strobing, which you can use in conjunction with adaptive sync. MSI calls this MPRT sync, and you'll find similar features on other monitors, including the M27QX. Unfortunately, this mode is a simple on-off toggle in the OSD. There are no further options to control strobe timing or length, which are important for adjusting the quality of backlight strobing. As far as said quality goes, this display does produce reasonable image quality at 240Hz with a faint double image caused by some crosstalk, though this is worse at the top and bottom of the display compared to the center. The image quality also gets worse at lower refresh rates like 144Hz, where we now start to see red fringing as well. All up, this is a pretty similar experience to the M27QX as the panel is the same. I'd say you could probably use this at higher refresh rates, but the use cases are limited. 
Color performance time, and first up is the color gamut. Like many sharp panels, the color gamut more heavily favors greens than reds, though we do get a wide color gamut overall. The weaker reds means that DCI-P3 coverage only ends up at 93.4% as P3 extends far into the red zone. However, for Adobe RGB, which is more strongly biased to greens, the MAG274 QRX is capable of 97.4% coverage. Overall, this leads to 73% coverage of Rec 2020, which is roughly on par with the M27QX. No surprises there, as both use the same panel. It's also a mid-table result overall, not as strong as the super-wide gamuts of the panel used in, say, the PG279QM. As for factory calibration, we get the usual sorts of things. MSI delivers decent grayscale calibration for gamma, although the CCT curve does have a slight blue tint, and this affects delta E's to a small degree. In other areas, you will see oversaturation, as the wide color gamut is left unclamped, so regular SDR content extends into the wide gamut, particularly for greens. This isn't the worst oversaturation, as skin tones are only affected to a small degree, but it's still not accurate for viewing SDR content. Compared to the M27QX, the MAG274QRX isn't as strong for factory grayscale calibration. The Gigabyte monitor is particularly good in that metric, though the MSI option isn't terrible either. Both monitors have similar color checker results. MSI offers users an sRGB mode in addition to Adobe RGB and Display P3 modes, which is a strong offering, and I do like this range of features on a gaming display. The Gigabyte alternative only has an sRGB mode. As for the sRGB mode though, it's good with improved grayscale performance versus the default mode and a reasonable effort at clamping the color gamut, although I think the clamping is slightly too aggressive here. That said, accuracy is definitely improved using this mode and results are similar to the same mode found in the M27QX. Here's a quick look at calibrated performance which can further improve results compared to the built-in modes. We use Calman to create these and really there's no issues with calibrating for sRGB and only a few challenges with other gamuts like P3 where the display's color gamut doesn't fully cover what those standards are capable of. Patreon and Floatplay members can download the ICC profiles we create for these reviews. Peak brightness in the SDR mode I measured 472 nits which is well above what MSI advertises though similar to the M27QX. Certainly this is plenty of brightness for most users. Minimum brightness though is only 82 nits which isn't as good as the M27QX. Depending on how dim you like your monitor in dark viewing environments this may be a point of difference though personally I like to calibrate to a high level of brightness regardless of how dark the room is. Then we get to the contrast ratio where the M27QX and MAG274QRX are very similar in what they deliver, which is as expected given they use the same panel. A contrast ratio around 1200 to 1 is above average for an IPS panel, but still poor overall given what VA panels and other display types can achieve. I wouldn't say the contrast is an issue as far as IPS LCDs go, but I wouldn't buy this for its black levels either. Uniformity was basically identical between this MSI model and the Gigabyte monitor we've focused our comparisons to. A bit of fall off along the outer edges, but the center section is decent. IPS glow with my unit was average, though really glow and uniformity can be panel dependent to some degree, so your mileage may vary. The final section of this review is the Hub Essentials checklist, which assesses whether MSI is accurately advertising this monitor's capabilities and whether the display meets basic acceptable performance metrics. In the first two sections, MSI does a good job of meeting the criteria, only failing in that the monitor should have HDMI 2.1 instead of HDMI 2.0 and the usual sRGB mode limitations. MSI, like Gigabyte, actually underestimates two aspects of performance. The monitor is a lot brighter than they say it is, and the performance in the sRGB mode is good enough to pass our factory calibration check, even though this isn't advertised. Motion performance is typical. MSI are misleading customers when claiming this is a one millisecond monitor. In the real world, the average response speed is more like five milliseconds with usable settings, and the best case response recorded was around two milliseconds. It can achieve one millisecond using the fastest overdrive setting, but the response also has heaps of overshoot, so we can't class it as one millisecond ourselves. The best mode for 240Hz gaming also has lower refresh compliance than we'd like to see. As for the HDR section, MSI do advertise display HDR400 certification. However, the MAG274QRX has no local dimming at all, so the HDR experience is terrible. I'd class this as a fake HDR monitor, and really it should not be advertised as HDR at all. However, the panel used here is defect-free, so you shouldn't expect to see flickering or pixel inversion.
Overall, the MSI Optics MAG274 QRX is a great monitor, and it's definitely a product I'd consider buying were I after a 1440p 240Hz gaming display. It continues this recent trend of 240Hz getting more and more affordable, out of the range of purely flagship buyers and into a more comfortable position. That gives us superior motion clarity, smoother desktop use, and better longevity at a lower price. The strengths of the MAG274 QRX are very similar to its main competitor, the Gigabyte M27QX. Motion performance is strong, as good as higher-end 1440p 240Hz IPS monitors, with an excellent variable refresh rate experience, no panel defects, and partially usable backlight strobing. We also get the usual benefits of an IPS display, like great viewing angles, nice wide color gamut, decent uniformity, and solid brightness, which MSI have complemented well with decent factory calibration and an sRGB mode. What we end up with is a nice balance between gaming and image quality that provides the versatility I'm looking for at this price. With both the MAG274 QRX and M27QX on the market now, I see little reason to buy more expensive 1440p 240Hz displays like the Acer XB273U GX or Alienware AW2721D. What these MSI and Gigabyte options offer is just as good at a lower price. The only exception I'd make is if you don't care about money and just want the best, in which case get the ASUS PG279QM, which is better but very expensive at $750 US. Or you might be tempted by the Odyssey G7 with its far better contrast ratio and even faster response times. Outside of those two, everything else seems irrelevant these days when 1440p 240Hz IPS is now around $500. The big question is which of these newer displays makes more sense to buy, the MSI model or the Gigabyte model? In my opinion, the MSI model is better, though what separates the two is just a few edge cases as the general experience is very similar. The main advantage is how the MAG274 QRX handles lower refresh rates, ultimately providing a single overdrive mode experience, which the M27QX does not. MSI also provides a better range of built-in display modes for color gamuts like Adobe RGB. However, the MSI model is also more expensive. I've seen price differences anywhere from $20 to $70 more, depending on the retailer, so roughly 10% more. Of course, this may vary in your region, so make sure you do your own research, but basically, with a 10% price difference, I think I'd get the MAG274 QRX. But it's close. I certainly could also justify saving a bit of cash to get the Gigabyte monitor. Both really are great monitors, and I think you'd be happy with either of them. Anyway, that's it for this review. If you do appreciate our monitor testing, go subscribe to Monitors Unboxed, our second channel, where there's additional monitor content if you're interested. And also, consider supporting us on Patreon and Floatplane. Links to that in the description below. You'll get access to things like our Discord chat. If you want to talk to me about monitors, chat to other monitor fans in there, all that sort of good stuff. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.